name's Rachel, but you can also call me a Goodreads asshole or a nerd on a power trip. I would be wearing that shirt, but um, I don't know where it is because I never fold my laundry, so yeah. Today we're talking about Lauren Huff and her book, Leaving Isn't the Hardest Thing, which is a memoir essay collection about her own life. Uh, Lauren Huff is a <laughs> author who has repeatedly been a dick to her viewers. Lauren grew up in a cult known as the Children of God, which is, it has roots in evangelical fundamentalism, but does a lot of similar things to Scientology. Uh, Children of God is not called Children of God anymore, it's called The Family now but they're still active today um, and at one point they were a sex cult and they 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 sexually abused children now had lauren not gone off on a twitter tirade about getting 4.5 star reviews instead of five star reviews which is what happened my first introduction to her would have been because later that same day after her tantrum roxanne gay tweeted saying that lauren's book was being published and that um it was an excellent book book that would have been my first introduction and I would have read this regardless because I I would trust Roxane Gay's recommendations I didn't love her book Bad Feminist but I do respect Roxane Gay for all of the I really like the panels that she's on there are several that I've watched uh, via YouTube that are just she's she's a very smart person and I would have read this book regardless based on Roxanne's recommendation so I'm gonna link down below to Jess from Book Community her video on this. Um, there's several, so Jess from Book Community, RC from Books from a Bye Guy also did an excellent video on this called <laughs> Gaslight Girl Boss Gatekeep, which uh, phenomenal. Another one is uh, Marinez who made this T-shirt. Well, her sister made it. So if you would like one, check the link down below. Go to Marinez's video, and uh, the link for that T-shirt will be linked. <laughs> down below. More on that in a second if you're not familiar with that phrase. Uh, and then another one from Mina Reads and also one from Peyton Reads. All of uh, their videos are fantastic and give different perspectives on this thing that Lauren decided to do. I'll give a little bit of my perspective on it since Lauren did <laughs> use my tweets several times. Um, but I, I'm also going to talk about the book. Um, and I think that most people in the book community have understandably written this book off. Um, so I thought that I'd read it and tell y'all if it was worth the read. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to be talking about my experiences with the book and um, explaining how it did help me understand why Lauren is the way that she is and treats people like shit. However, I don't think that her behavior towards other people, her bullying of other people is justified. I think that nothing excuses what she did, honestly. All right, so a quick rundown of the situation. The original issue was her tweeting this, glad to see most of the Goodreads assholes still giving four star reviews to show their super tough reviewers who need to like fall in love, you know, anyway, no one likes you. Completely unwarranted. <laughs> she shows a screenshot of two people, Debbie and Hannah, on Goodreads who read the book, gave it 4.5 stars, which is just below five, and one said that they were rounding up and one said that they were rounding down. And Lauren hated this and told them to grow up to her 70,000 Twitter followers. I have all the fucking tweets, but they're all out of order because I am a not <laughs> put together individual. I don't even fucking fold my laundry. Fuck! All the writers scared to even like that tweet. I see you. I will hate them out loud for you. Hate them for giving 4.5 stars. Fucking nerds on a power trip, you forgot to assign homework, motherfuckers. Um, so this continued on for uh, days <laughs> because people were like, hey, not fucking cool. Over 4.5 stars? Really? So then she backtracked several times and said, you know what the problem here is? It's a really goddamn good book. Everyone has agreed on that and people talk about what they love. They get evangelical about it. I'll be the book your hairdresser won't show up, shut up about, so thanks I guess. This is about a bunch of self-appointed vigilantes destroying someone's life work, life's work because she didn't smile. 4.5 stars, Lauren. 4.5. I will um, <clears throat> have to add here, by the way, that I forgot to say that people started one star bombing her on Goodreads. 
so having not read the book they decided to more review her behavior rather than her book and one star her en masse on Goodreads which brought the book down from somewhere around a 4 to like somewhere at one point I think it was like a 1.8 um, which I think that I, I don't know if this is true for everybody but I think that the way that people who typically use Goodreads is that they read the reviews and try to find out what exactly went wrong with the book that people are one starring it in mass or three starring it. With Amazon I think that people use that a little differently because even though they are owned by the same people I think that people use Amazon to tell them if something is four or five stars on Amazon it's good I'm gonna buy it without checking the reviews. But if something is less than four stars on Goodreads, typically I think, and this is my, this is how I work at least, typically people will try to find out why because Amazon is a shopping site and you can just instantly buy things, whereas Goodreads is a reviewing site. So I think that there's a little bit of a difference there and I don't know that one starring really has the effect that people who one star are <laughs> I don't think that it actually translate to, translates to less sales. Plus, I think there's something to be said about the people who believe that cancel culture is a thing because they will see people one starring in mass and they'll be like, I'm going to read and support because I hate cancel culture even though nobody got canceled, you're not a TV show. Anyway, at one point Lauren said that she made the tweets because she was high and then she backtracked and said, haha, they think it that I made these tweets because I was high. So she just kind of lied repeatedly. <laughs> Lauren said that uh, this was akin to telling somebody you shouldn't have worn that skirt. And someone said, trigger, trigger warning rape, are you comparing Twitter drama about book reviews to being raped and victim blamed? And Lauren said, trigger warning, yep. She rewrote the situation several times, which is gaslighting. Um, and at one point while talking to me, Let's talk about inappropriate behavior. I called non-specific people assholes. That's not true because she literally left their names and faces in the tweet. So that's a lie. As I tend to do, I don't care what you tend to do. You, a feminist, are defending a mob that retaliated by review bombing the work of a woman. And now you, a feminist, are telling me it's because I was too loud or didn't smile. I didn't say you were too loud or didn't smile. I said that you called people assholes for giving you 4.5 instead of 5, rev five reviews, acting a little bit like fucking Donald Trump, as if you deserve the highest of praise, and if you don't get it, you throw a temper tantrum. I don't care if you're allowed. People were defending her, saying um, she thinks that this happened because it was, because she's queer, and she said, I'm going with yes. She said to me that this is happening because she's a woman. Um, she said, I think they like queers until we get too loud or queer or show any signs but quiet gratitude they let us be in the room. A lot of people who were talking about her behavior are queer, including me. So no, <laughs> it's not about you being a woman or about you being queer. It's the fact that you were mean. You were awful to people who liked your book. She said about trigger warnings, which <laughs> It's hilarious because this is ironic considering Roxanne Gay, who doesn't like trigger warnings either, said that this was a great book. The trigger warnings in these tweets are extra special considering, yes, that is what's happening here, but life doesn't give you warnings, you'll know that later on, which actually sounds a lot like what Roxanne Gay said in her book Bad Feminist about trigger warnings, which I vehemently disagreed with. We talked about this in the live show for Bad Feminist for my book club, so if you want to listen to us talk more about that and why trigger warnings are valid and why you shouldn't invalidate other people needing trigger warnings because you don't get to speak for everybody. I'll leave a link down below. Then she said, it's triggering as fuck. I mean, for fuck's sake, I just put out a book about being silenced. Nobody silenced you. We're saying that you, <laughs> you were mean to people who gave your book a good review. Fucking tortured for not smiling enough, not being grateful for the torture. I hoped, I really fucking hoped that being a writer meant I could speak. Finally, and here we are again. You are speaking on Twitter to 70,000 people minimum and you called people assholes for not giving your book five stars. That's literally what happened. Uh, my friend Delphi said, you do know that feminism isn't the same thing as all women are perfect and should never be called out for something right. And Lauren said, you do know that I'm allowed to defend myself against actual harm and retaliation for not smiling, right? That's not what happened. <laughs> Nobody was mad at you for not smiling. You got mad because people didn't give your book five stars. That's what happened. 
The lies. Um, she said they, and this is the funniest part, think I blamed being stoned. What I did was a loud think about how arbitrary all this shit is. The rating, is it 4.5 or 4 or 5? Who gives a shit? And how fucked is it that they can destroy someone's book before it even gets a chance to breathe? Her book wasn't destroyed. It's, it's very popular on, on Amazon, and she knows this because she's tweeted about it. On top of this, um, she was not, this is another lie because she didn't talk about how, <laughs> how arbitrary ratings is. She talked about the people. She, she didn't say rating systems at any point. She did not say rating systems are ar arbitrary. She said, good to know that Goodreads assholes are still giving books 4.5 instead of five stars. Nerds on a power trip. No one likes you. Wouldn't want to be stuck to these nerds on a plane. That's not you talking about how arbitrary rating systems are. That's literally you talking about specific people who did a specific thing that you did not like because you feel like you're deserving of more praise. But you can lie, it's fine. She said, there's an entire thread of context, an entire Twitter history of my stoned ass saying dumb shit. It's like my whole thing. Literally everyone who follows me knows there's a 97% chance if I'm tweeting I'm stoned. I was exhausted and am. I was excited and fucking terrified. My book was coming out in the morning so I was stoned and threw up a bunch of half-formed expletive laden t thoughts thinking like I do that I was talking to the wall. Y you don't think that though because you have a Patreon where people pay you to teach them about how to use social media. Lies! They think I was mad about a four-star review. They think I throw a tantrum about a fucking four-star review. They're saying posting a screenshot of the review in my feed was doxing. I'd like to know what they think the internet is. Then she told a whole bunch of people to eat shit. Um, she was name searching herself on Twitter and blocking literally everybody. Now there's a thread of people who are like, oh, I've been blocked by Lauren Huff too and I never even talked to her. So... <laughs> Oh, Twitter. What an interesting place. I just opened Twitter instead of my notes app. Yikes. Um, I just want to point out that I did use my feminist book club to talk to her because she had blocked me before I even got a chance to talk to her. And uh, while I do run a feminist AF book club is what it's called, I don't consider myself to be any sort of authority on feminism. It's a book club to talk about feminism in the context of literature. It's a book club to use literature as a jumping off point to talk about the different things that encompass feminism. Um, how I practice feminism is still absolutely up for uh, constructive criticism at any point, um, but Lauren was not doing that. And the way that she switched from talking about her actions, <laughs> treating people like shit, to my feminism, because feminism, mine or anybody else's, has nothing to do with her actions. Women are not, like, excused from treating people like shit just because they're women. That I mean, white feminism, the, the type of feminism that centers whiteness, that, that's, yeah. Uh, but she knew that, it, it, she knew that. This was a red herring on her part. Her pointing out that the book club was feminist in nature was a red herring because she wanted to deflect. It was extremely disappointing to watch her send people my way by quote tweeting me, which she's still doing, in an effort to recenter the conversation on who's feminist enough or not, rather than just talking about what I was talking about, which is you're treating people like shit for no reason. And as I said, I pointed this out to Lauren and she said, your mom's a red herring, so that's interesting. <laughs> That's the weirdest fucking me. That's some Donald Trump shit right there. Um, Lauren already has me and the book club blocked on Twitter, so I assume that anything I said further about the book once I finally got the waitlist on the library was really long. So I don't think that the Goodreads assholes, <laughs> whether they're giving her 4.5 star or one star, have anything to do with um, you know the whether or not people are asking libraries or buying her book. Um, so I I requested it from the library when it came out. And it took me a while to get it. I think, uh, I don't remember, what is time? I'm a stay-at-home mom. So uh, maybe six, seven weeks to get it. So that tells you something, people are reading it, which is great. I mean, I'm glad for her success. I'm not like wishing her a, a, a fail. I didn't go one star review her. I, though I will tell you what my, what my star rating is. Um, I didn't one star review her. I, I don't wish her to fail. I just, her bad, treatment of other people and her writing a book are like two wholly separate issues to me. I can review the behavior and I can review the book. However, the thing, certain things that she said in the book, because they give context to her behavior, I should note that I can't divorce them from each other. So there should be, I, I, I should note that. All right, so recently while I was reading the book, I was tweeting about the book, as I do. <laughs> 
because that's what my Twitter, that's solely what my Twitter is, was created for. She's still name searching herself and reading tweets about herself or somebody sending them her way. It, I don't know. Um, I'm going to guess that she's still name searching herself. So recently while I was reading the book, um, I was tweeting about it because I wasn't sure about that, what in the book she felt was worthy of being school curriculum. So I tweeted saying this, and then a few days later I was reading several books at once, and as I tend to do, I'm like currently in the middle of five. Um, I just, that's, that's what I do. Some people do, some people don't. That's the reading community for you. And I said that at the time, um, I was really enjoying everything I was reading. Like everything was either a four or a five, except Lauren's book, which was feeling more like a two and a half to me. Are rating systems arbitrary? Yes, but I go based off feelings. So sorry, Lauren. Uh, I just was not loving it. That's not to say I was like, oh, it's one star. It's the worst fucking thing I've ever read. Um, it's not. It's just everything else I was really, really loving and enjoying. Meanwhile, Lauren's was a slog to pick back up. And that's not normally how I feel about nonfiction essay collections. So that was a real bummer. Like for instance, and I'm going to talk about this book more later, when I picked up Carmen Maria Machado's <laughs> In the Dream House, I had a hard time putting that shit down. Um, I only had to put it down when I was crying too much to pay attention, so. Um, so the next day after tweeting, like the second tweet about how I just wasn't really enjoying it, I was getting a bunch of Lauren Huff supporters and I wasn't sure why. Uh, so come to find out, she had a screenshot of my tweet saying that her book was just okay and she put it on her Twitter to her 70,000 followers and said, you still read the book though, which, <laughs> yeah, like how else would I review it, Lauren? I thought that that was the problem. I thought that you were mad about people writing the book before having read it. I thought that that's what you were having a tantrum about with the one star and mass. Like I thought I was doing the thing that you asked people to do, but okay. I don't know how I would re review the book without reading it, Lauren, but I guess that makes me a nerd on a power trip. So people were, uh, one guy called me trash and she was like, yeah. And she, she thought that that was cool. It's just like, it's so fucking funny. It's like, okay, so if I call out your bad behavior, I'm not a feminist, but if a man calls me trash, you're still a feminist? Okay, see, this is why, this is why you can't boil down feminism to that arbitrary bullshit, but okay. Anyway, so the basic gist of it is Lauren got mad because people gave her 4.5 star reviews instead of 5 star reviews, right? <laughs> Basically pulling a Donald Trump. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. Intel has told us there were at least seven. Okay, I already see one, give him. Okay. They're the same picture. Then she noticed she was getting backlash and both weaponized her followers and tried to make them feel bad for her, rewrote the situation several times. Now, reality can be whatever I want. Uh, she doubled and tripled down and gaslit and <laughs> it just was a fucking mess. And then just told a bunch of people to eat shit. <laughs> so, yeah. So I read her book and I do kind of understand why she is the way that she is, but I still think that the way that she treats people is absolute bullshit and she needs to go to therapy, which we all need to go to therapy. That's just, that's part of being a human. After reading the whole book, I'm still not sure why she feels like it's good enough to be school curriculum. She said that it's going to be funny as shit when these people have to read my book in school. And yeah, I don't like her very much as a person from what I've gathered. Um, she treats people like shit for not giving her sufficient enough praise and then lies about it. But her being a shit person and the book not being what I was hoping it would be are two different issues. I just didn't enjoy it. It just was not an enjoyable read for me for several reasons. So let's finally talk about her book and not her behavior. The problem that I personally have with it, and I just wanna point out that I'm not saying that any of her trauma is invalid because it absolutely is. And I, it, a lot of it was, was awful that she went through and I hope that she's in therapy. I hope that she's, I hope that she's, you know, getting to a point where she can just get through the day. Uh, that's. It's really all you can hope for somebody who struggles with mental health. So I don't wish her ill. I do think she's a shit person. I do think her book was mediocre, but I do think everything that she went through 
um, was awful and her feelings about it are valid. Uh, part of the issue is her authorial voice, the way that she delivers things 99% of the time is, uh, I don't have the book anymore so I can't read excerpts to you beyond what I've copied and pasted in my notes. But the problem is that she writes in a very specific way that does not work for me. It might work for you, it didn't work for me. So the way that she structures things is she writes these very short clipped sentences over and over and over and then she has one long sentence that is supposed to be like profound but it ends in just her sort of being a cynic and it's like oh I thought this was building up to like a really cool thought oh okay now she's just pissed off at everybody again okay so it's like these long thought trains after these very clipped sentences and you're just like eh fizzles out. And I think that part of the problem is that, first of all, one of my favorite books is, again, In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, which is also a sort of essay collection, sort of, but it's a memoir um, about her experiences, Carmen's experiences with a abusive um, partner. And she's a queer woman, she was in a queer relationship, and um, she, the woman that she was in a relationship with was abusive towards her, and talking about that. And that book is phenomenal truly phenomenal so I can't help but compare books to each other when I read them I'm not able to not do that as a reviewer that's how I review um, and also I read this directly after reading <laughs> although I'm still technically reading it because I use it to fall asleep because her voice is such a delight I just read Angela Davis's freedom is a constant struggle which the audiobook is on hoopla I can't recommend it highly enough and she's a fucking genius. Everything that she says, every sentence is so like well formulated to be delivered so that your brain is like, this is fucking profound. This is incredible. Angela Davis is doing it like nobody else is. It's also a collection of essays. It's called um, Palestine. And it, it basically is talking about how individualism is bullshit and everything is connected to everything else. And if we're going to give a shit about one thing, we have to give a shit about another thing happening across the world because um, we are a collective. The way that Angela Davis words things is just immaculate and, and going from that to going to um, leaving isn't the hardest thing was a huge juxtaposition for me. It, it was very jarring so I think that that may have had a lot to do with why I was not enjoying Lauren's book as much because I couldn't help but compare the greatness to from which I had just came. <laughs> so, Which reading Angela Davis, you know what her overarching point is and how it connects to all the other things that she's saying, including the tangents that she goes off on. Lauren would regularly go off on tangents that had nothing to do with the point she was making and in fact I would forget what the point of the essay was. During the majority of the first I forget how many there were. I want to say like seven. The first like three, four? The first four, I it, it was like, I don't know what your point is. I, 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 you've lost me several times. At one point she was like talking about the proper way to make mixed drinks and I was like, why do I need to know this? I don't. It reminded me of Roxane Gay, her essay collection, Bad Feminist, that I had a lot of issue with because she would go off on tangents about Scrabble for like long periods of time and I'm like, Roxanne, you're losing me here. Again, I just want to point out that all of this is subjective. And in Carmen Marina Machado's book, um, In the Dream House, it talks about uh, these things that I, that I have not um, really delved into. So um, queer abuse, the different forms in which abuse takes, uh, queer history being erased, so things that I have not really researched and delved into. So all of it was very new for me, as well as it's just incredibly haunting and beautifully written. So I can understand why a book like that, or a book like Freedom is a Constant Struggle, would be used as curriculum. I could even understand why Bad Feminist would be used as curriculum because there are certain points where it's like, oh yeah, I can understand how, you know, there's feminist stereotypes and stuff. With Lauren's book, I don't feel like she did anything new other than tell her own personal story. But everything about like the fundamentalist um, cult shit, I have already experienced through other forms of media. So such as like the Leah Remini show on Scientology, being in deconstruction of fundamentalist evangelical beliefs groups um, on the internet where we talk about our experiences and work through them together. Uh, listening to Mike Hargue's book, listening to the Liturgist podcast. I, I have already done the work of deconstructing from the cult adjacent thing in which I was brought up. 
So everything that Lauren was saying, while relatable, was not new to me and therefore I was like, yeah, I can relate to that, but it's not profound. And again, I, I recognize that this is entirely subjective and you may get a lot out of um, listening to her, di not dissect, but talk about how the military can also be a cult. Um, American nationalism can also be a cult-like behavior. But those are things that I have already delved into. Carlos at one time joined the military, so we have talked about how it can be like cult-like behavior. Um, I was in fundamentalism for a long time, so I have done the work of deconstructing for like the past five years now. So everything that she said was not really new to me. I, I recognize that that's, that's me and you might have a different experience reading it, but that's, that's what it was for me. And that's why I felt like it was mediocre in part, but also because Angela Davis <laughs> is unmatched. And like I said in my tweets, it, it was just okay. Like it's not a bad book. It's just, it was just okay. Um, I didn't like the writing and I didn't feel like she said anything that I hadn't already heard, so. Another thing, this book reminded me, ironically, about of uh, Roxane Gay's uh, Bad Feminist in the way that I did not enjoy Roxane Gay's Bad Feminist. Um, there was, this, like I said, the superfluous information, right, like about Scrabble, like I do not need to know all this shit about Scrabble, but she had three different really shitty opinions that were really fucking condescending and just bad takes and condescending towards people who didn't need to be condescended to, like trauma victims and uh, rape victims. Lauren Huff's book is similar in these respects because, um, I actually, now I guess it makes sense on why Roxane Gay recommended it. Um, there were a lot of moments where I'm reading it and she's giving these side notes about shit that is completely irrelevant, um, or she's being a dick to groups of people for like literally no reason and speaking to them as if they are her audience. So it makes you feel like you, her audience, are hated by her. And it's like, well then why the fuck am I reading your book? <laughs> You're such an asshole. You don't even know me. Um, at one point she said something to the effect of, if you're worried about people's drug use, just know that we abuse drugs because of you. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh, yikes. At one point in my notes, I was just so tired of it that I said, okay, Lauren, we get it. You hate everyone. And then as I said, her behavior is sort of um, made understandable to me, though definitely not justified, because she says several times that she's a liar. Um, she said it so many times throughout the book. And at one point, like right in the beginning, she said, it could be hard sometimes to keep my lies straight. Hazard of the trade. The trade that is being a fucking liar, whatever the reason keeps you apart. And at the beginning of the book talking about how she she wrote this and but anyway, she says, I've changed small details to provide my loved ones a bit of camouflage, but as anyone with siblings knows, you can experience the same event and none of you will agree on what happened. Unfortunately for them, I'm the one telling the stories. She writes about this as if lying is always a defense mechanism for her, but I would argue that lying has become an offensive me mechanism for her, and that's why I think she should probably go to therapy. <laughs> Not that I don't think anybody can benefit. I mean, everybody needs to be in therapy. I love therapy. I love therapy. I love my antidepressants. I hate my mental illness. We're all on the same shitty boat here together. Anyway, that's my review. I I could probably talk about more, but I'm just tired of talking about this woman <laughs> and this book because it was so mediocre and I, I I would rather talk about a book I loved or a book I hated, not about a mediocre book. So that's what happened. That was Lauren Huff, The Saga. Um, yep, I read her book. I guess if I were to star it, maybe I would give it two and a half stars, um, which rating systems are arbitrary. Her and I agree on that, although that was not her original point. Her book was just mediocre to me, but I think that other people might find it profound if they have not done the work to deconstruct um, religious beliefs or if they just didn't grow up in a cult or cult adjacent as I call myself. Um, so that's it. That's that's all I had to say about that book. It was fine. It was okay. Um, I just didn't find it like wow at any point. So and yes Lauren I do have to fall in love in order to write a book <laughs> more, than, more than two and a half stars. My apologies I guess. I don't know. That, that makes me a Goodreads asshole. I am a full-on nerd on a power trip apparently. So okay. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below. See you next time. Bye.